Welcome to the Green Yard Reaction. In this lab, we'll be making a Green Yard Reagent, which is a carbon chain that is bound to a magnesium halide. The magnesium is positive, therefore the carbon next to it is negative. That negative charged carbon is going to now be the nucleophile in a reaction with a ketone or aldehyde where that carbon of the carbonyl is the electrophile. This is a very important reaction in organic chemistry because we are creating a carbon-carbon bond. There are special conditions required, however. We need a moisture-free environment for this reaction to be successful. This two-step reaction starts with the formation of the Grignard reagent. We will react bromobenzene with magnesium metal in ether to make the Grignard. Once we have the green yard formed, we will react it with benzophenone, followed by treatment with acid, to give us a tertiary alcohol, triphenylmethanol. In order to keep the reaction dry, we will use a closed system, including a Claisen adapter, a drying tube, and a rubber septum. I wanted to point out that the one discrepancy in this schematic is that we're using a round bottom flask rather than a conical vial. Here is what your setup will look like with the round bottom attached to the Claisen adapter with the rubber septum and the drying tube set up over a stir plate so that we can stir our reaction as well. The drying tube will be packed with calcium chloride that will be held in place by cotton. Magnesium strips are cut up for a total mass of 0.15 grams. The magnesium will be transferred to a round bottom flask. And that round bottom flask has to be completely dry, so we put it in the oven to drive off any residual water. Our magnesium metal and a stir bar will be placed in this vessel. Now we're going to want to transfer some diethyl ether into a second dry round bottom flask for use in this experiment. Don't forget the septum. Now in a small sample vial, we are going to place 0.7 milliliters of bromobenzene. And to that vial, we are going to add 4 milliliters of anhydrous diethyl ether. We will cap the vial and use this to add to our magnesium metal in the round bottom. Using a syringe, we will withdraw 0.8 milliliters of our bromobenzene mixture and add it using the septum to the 50 milliliter round bottom flask with the magnesium. Make sure that we recap the vial with the bromobenzene in it to keep that as dry as possible and also have our stir bar spinning in a way that allows the magnesium contact with the reagent and does not push the magnesium up on the sides of the vessel. After some time, if you do not see the evolution of bubbles coming from your magnesium, it may be necessary to add a few crystals of iodine to get the reaction going. And that is what I did here. It's hard to see here, but once I started to see bubbles and my solution became brownish and cloudy, I knew I was on my way so I could add more bromobenzene mixture. Over the next 15 minutes, I added the rest of the bromobenzene solution. I rinsed out my vial with anhydrous ether and added that to the reaction as well. At times, I had to gently heat the reaction to keep it going. And I did end up adding a little bit of anhydrous ether to make sure my volume was remaining constant. For the next 15 minutes, I monitored the reaction and watched as the magnesium was being used up. At the 30 minute mark, I turned the hot plate off, allowing the reaction to come back to room temperature. We made a Green Yard reagent. Yay, congratulations. Now let's go ahead and react that with a ketone and make our final product. The ketone that we will be using in this reaction is benzophenone, and we are going to take 1.09 grams of benzophenone and mix that with 2 milliliters of anhydrous diethyl ether. Using a syringe, I added the benzophenone ether mixture to my reaction and then monitored the reaction over the next 15 minutes. It is not real time, it is sped up here for you and for your enjoyment. Here I am adding the ether that I used to rinse out the vial.
Here it is after 15 minutes. So you're going to add the HCl to neutralize the reaction mixture. The addition of the acid will convert our intermediate into our final product of triphenylmethanol. Initially, it will be added slowly using a glass pipette. Then I added the remainder of the HCl using a graduated cylinder. In addition, any unreacted magnesium will react here as well. Here the reaction is slowed down so that you can see the evolution of the hydrogen. Now back to normal speed, you can see that most of the magnesium has reacted. I added about 8 milliliters of ether. I am able to see two distinct layers without any residual solid, so I'm ready to go for my extraction. As soon as I add the ether, my product, the triphenylmethanol, will go into the ether layer, leaving all the inorganic side products in the aqueous layer. During my extraction, I will pull off the aqueous layer through the bottom of the funnel. Remember, my product is in the ether. I'm going to need to save this aqueous layer to wash it one more time with the ether. I'm also going to save the ether layer, but this time I'm going to pour it out of the top of the funnel to avoid contamination with the aqueous at the bottom of the funnel. I'm going to wash that aqueous layer one more time with another 5 milliliters of ether, and then I'm going to take both ether layers, put them together, and dry with sodium sulfate. After a few minutes when my ether layer is dry, I can then decant or pour my ether from the sodium sulfate into a new Erlenmeyer flask. Now it is time to evaporate the solvent in the hood by heating the flask gently on a hot plate. To give us this oily solid, which is actually a mixture of triphenylmethanol and biphenyl. This biphenyl side product can be removed using petroleum ether. I added 3 milliliters of petroleum ether to the Erlenmeyer and heated it gently on a hot plate. Now the biphenyl is soluble in petroleum ether and my triphenylmethanol is not. I will then use vacuum filtration to get rid of all of the petroleum ether and collect my triphenylmethanol crystals. Nice, pretty crystals. I transferred these dried crystals into a pre-weighed weighing boat. Finally, I transferred my final product into a sample vial for subsequent melting point, NMR, and IR analysis. A little more insight into how to get an IR spectrum. The first thing you're going to do is hit the background scan button. It takes about a minute and you'll see that the spectrum that shows up on the screen here is going to be the background scan. And so we'll wait till that gets, you'll see the bar at the bottom gets to 100% and then that means we're complete and we're ready to go ahead and run our sample. We load our sample onto the sample chamber and turn the knob to finger tighten that apparatus. Right to the left of the background is the scan, and so we're going to hit the scan icon there, and that starts the scan of our sample. Of course, we're removing the background. Same thing here. It'll display on the screen, but the bar at the bottom will tell us when we're ready. And so once we get to 100%, then our sample will be ready, and we'll be all set. Once our scan is complete, we'll have to print that. So you go to File, Print Preview, and a preview of your spectrum will show up on the screen. And once we verify that that is the one that we want to print, in fact, we can go over to File, and we'll do File, Print, and that'll be all set there. And then notice here the piece of tape, it prints in room 225. So you got to run across the hall and pick up your printer. And now, Safety with Jane. Again, subbing in for Jane is Dr. C. This experiment is a little special, and so we do have some extra safety precautions. Diethyl ether is highly flammable, and care must be taken when handling the solvent. Keep it away from flames and direct heat. Due to the high reactivity of the Greenyard reagent that we are making, we have to make sure that we keep it away from all air and water as much as possible. 
As always, reactions should be done in the fume hood and safety glasses and nitrile gloves should be worn at all times. Considerable care must be exercised to make sure you do not burn yourself when we're using the hot plate and or getting hot glassware out of the oven. We also have to make sure that when we invert that SEP funnel that we point it away from ourselves and others and that we're careful when we're venting that reaction in the SEP funnel. Make sure we're careful when we handle all concentrated acids and of course, as always, dispose of all waste in the waste hood. Be safe. There you have it, the green yard reaction and a reaction that requires dry conditions or moisture-free environment. Congratulations. In your lab report, make sure that you complete a full spectral analysis for full credit. Good luck.